Hello and welcome to the 10th video in this series of videos on programming Chess Engine in C. This will be the last video on messing around with the pawn bit boards for now. I've got to do two more little things before we can go back to looking at setting up the board proper. And that is we need a couple of little methods to set a bit in a bit board. So say change the bit board on E6 to a 1 from a 0 and also to clear it to set it back then from a uh, from a 1 back to a 0. So the way we're going to do that is using a couple of arrays of 64-bit numbers and I've already defined them here in the global section in defs.h calling one set mask and one clear mask type u64 and there are 64 numbers inside the array each one of them. I've also in init.c declared them here as well without the extern keyword and started a function here, a void function called init bit masks, and at the moment just declared one variable called index, set that equal to zero. In the all init function I've added on the init bit masks function at the bottom here as so. So back to this init bit masks function, what we're going to do is initialize these two masks that we can then use them to set and clear bits as needed at the specified 0 to 63 number. So the first thing we need to do is make a loop to actually zero the values inside the arrays. So that's simply in this manner. So we'll take set mask. In fact, we'll take the whole thing here to make it a little bit quicker because I'm terrible at typing angle brackets on a Mac keyboard. And we'll set this to zero URL, and exactly the same thing will be done to the clear masks so that we know that they contain values of zero. And now to actually set the values for the set mask, the set mask we simply want to do one URL shifted by index. That should be from the previous uh, video self explanatory. And the set mask, the clear mask, will simply be set to the bitwise complement of the set mask. So that is anything that in the set mask value was a 1 is a 0 and anything that was a 0 is a 1. That's all this bitwise complement tilde here does. Okay and that's all we need to do to initialize these bit masks. One further thing we can do is actually create a couple of macros which I've already done to make using them a little bit easier. And I'll just copy and paste those in now. I'm a fan of using as many brackets as possible in macros to make sure nothing untoward happens. Hence the brackets like this. I'll just leave that there so you've got time to copy that out or you can pause the video. And all this is doing is taking the bit board and the square and then performing the operation. So we use an AND with the clear mask or a bitwise OR with the set mask. And now I'll just compile this and make sure it does compile. It does, good. Won't run it yet though because there's nothing to run. And now going into the main function, I've got our play bit board, and what I thought I would do is quickly show what these masks look like in a big loop. So if I go back to init and just take out a loop for speed here, and now what I'm going to do is say print bit board, and I'll print set mask at index and we'll do it in one moment for the clear mask as well and I'll just print F a new line as well just so that we have things a little bit more separated and in fact what I could also do suppose is say index just so we know approximately where we are good now if I compile and run this we get a load of things printing to the screen. So I'll scroll back up, well I can't scroll back up too far, but what you can see is here we're two, uh, two rows on the third row down and two along, sorry the third one along, then the fourth one along, then the sixth one along, fifth one, sixth one and so on. And you can see that this is going down row by row by row by row. And what this simply is saying, this is the what's called the set mask. So if I want to set the bit at index 61 then you can see from the macro that I use a bitwise OR 
which will essentially add the bit in this position into the bit board. So if that's not clear, I can take our play bit board here and I can simply call set bit the play bit board and the square was 61 in this way and then I'll print the play bit board and you'll see that it has this bit then set because at the beginning obviously it's nothing. I'll just comment this loop out for now. Make oops. And now you can see that the bit is set inside the playbook board here. So that's how set works. And clear, remember, works using an and. And if I print out the clear masks, we'll leave this on for now but comment it out because we'll then clear the same bit. And compile and run the code. You'll see here that all the bits are set apart from the one on the index. And because we'll and our bit board with these bits, we'll then lose the bit at the specified index. So if we take our example again, the 61, which is here, remove the comments, and now I can remove this loop because I don't need it anymore. And now I can clear a bit and print the play bit board again. So compile and run. And you can see that here the bit was set and now the bit has been cleared. So a short video and the last thing we really needed to be able to do for our pawn bit boards. So in the last few videos we've learned to count, pop bits from our bit boards, print a bit board to the screen and we've also got our macros for setting and clearing a specified bit also from the pawn bit boards. Good, thanks very much for watching, taking the time to listen and comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.